starts with emergency teleport. It's about as good as it gets. Yeah, the, we get the Ziamin onto the field. He's going to be able to make that life point deficit immediately. And for those of you who don't know about the gold pride cards, a lot of them can special summon from the hand as long as your life points are lower than your opponent. And then the extra deck monsters get extra special abilities while they're lower as well that help you end the game in a flash. So we are adding a Yukio Shirakusai into the hand. All right, that's the fusion summoning one. Because so I proceed to normal summon out the card. Pays 600. He's going to activate that and fusion summon. This is going to allow him to go into the fusion Yukio. And right away, immediately uses the effect. And that's going to allow him to special summon up to, I believe, two. That's right. Two of the punk monsters from the deck, as long as they have different levels. And aren't level eight. Yes, that's correct. Aren't level eight. So Rising Carp splits back up, and we have Deer Note and... Wagon. Wagon. Wagon's important here because it's going to go ahead and get you your field spell, which is kind of crazy. It's, it feels like a pot of greed almost. A little bit, every turn. He, and it also has a bonus of giving you extra normal summons to get punk monsters out of your hand if you have too many. Yes, and we are going for the we are going for the field spell now. Anytime a psychic monster pays light points for their effects, they're going to be able to draw cards. That's the uh, that's the draw effect. Synchro summoning for level eight here, and that is should be Punk Jam Dragon Drive. Yes, we're going to get the Deer Note. Deer Note effect well. is getting back the Shirakusai. He is proceeding to, apparently looking through his deck. Yeah, oh, I do wonder what he's fetching out. for Dragon Drive, yeah. So he still hasn't got any of the traps yet. We don't have Madam Spider either. And I believe that is the Madam Spider right there. Yep, that last piece of the puzzle there, going to get the extra normal summon here. Now, each of these punk monsters, they like a lot of people know that, oh, they can pay the life points, but they do have additional effects as well. Mm -hmm. And because of paying life points for a psychic monster effect, you can draw a card off of the field spell. Banishes a punk monster, special summons the Madam Spider. Madam Spider's going to pay as well, grab a trap card. Interesting, he's playing uh, both of them, both the Dangerous Gabu and the Nishiwari Surprise. One of them is an effect negation for monsters, which also gains you life points. Mm -hmm. And the other one can take out a set card, or any card, if you control a punk monster. I believe that is the Dangerous Gabu. That's the one. And another draw off of the field spell as well. He's down quite a bit of life points. But that's the great thing about that's why you combine this with the gold pride cards, because those cards can just annihilate you in an instant. And here we see the first one of those. It's gold pride Captain Carey. And she's one of the reasons that you can hit so hard. Uh, Captain Adds gold pride start your engines from the deck to the hand. And start your engine really means start your engine. It's quite literal. It's a very, very powerful card. And uh, if it does get sprung on the opponent, they're going to be surprised, especially when they don't know what it does. Sends two level threes to the graveyard. It's a tuner and a non-tuner for Gold Pride Star Leon. Star Leon's a powerful way to disrupt your opponent on their turn. It can gain the attack points of one of your opponent's monsters during the main phase. Mm -hmm. And if you have lower life points, you can destroy that monster as well. It's uh, almost comparable to... A Boral Sword. Yeah, it's a little bit like a two-material Boral Sword. You can actually play this in any deck you want. It has no restriction on the materials. Well, that's a great way to actually clear some monsters off, especially if you can get into a Synchro Level 6. We're going to see a set two cards in the back, and I believe we have Pass Turn. All right, so we know that we have Dangerous Gabu. We know we have Start Your Engines. Oh, and it looks like Daniel will start off with a card that's very appropriate considering that we have Jake Paik, the voice of Playmaker, here this weekend. And that is Link into the Vrains. Oh, can you tell me a little bit about that card? So Link into the Vrains lets you special summon a monster from your hand, and then you have to immediately Link summon using that monster. Well, Visa Star for us, I think there's only one monster that comes to mind that could be using Visa Star for us as the material. Just a single material, and that is the Scareclaw. Scareclaw Light Heart. Seems like the Scareclaw matchup we are going to see it really kick off right now. So Lightheart hits the field. This is one of those ones that gets you your field spell when it's Link Summoned. Oh, and the field spell gets you even more cards. Yep. So a battle of dueling field spells that are full of cards. Oh boy. And chaining to that effect is Gold Pride Start Your Engines. 
So start your engines. When your opponent summons a monster or monsters, you choose one of them. You choose three gold pride monsters from your deck. They can all be the same one if you like. And then you destroy your opponent's monster and summon whichever of the cards from your deck that was chosen by your opponent. Oh, we're gonna this is randomly chosen too. So you're going to get one, two, two uh, copies of Nitro Head and another copy of Carry. No Leons. Interesting. Now those are going to get shuffled up. Oh, Daniel's yep. going to pick his poison. Noah's going to special summon the chosen monster and Lightheart is going to the graveyard. Almost feels like a very, very powerful trap hole like card. Mm hmm. Ooh, the one out of three carry hits the field. Oh, that is a, that's a bit of a, a bit of a luck a draw of the luck there. It is for now, but it might not be. I mean, and it looks like he went ahead and grabbed. You can see that's a planet or a rival. Well, whichever one that he grabbed, we're going to see how he's going to follow up with this. We need the, uh, the spotter's guide here. Now it is the planet. It was searched with uh, Lightheart. All right. Oh, we see a triple tactics talent uh, be played right now. Now that's dangerous. That's dangerous when you've got the uh, Star Leon out there. It can get big for anybody. And it seems like we are going to we are going to be taking control of that Star Leon. That also gets one of the disruptions out of the way. So we know that the remaining one is Dangerous Gabu. He's going to activate a spell card. There's the Scareclaw arrival. There. I figured there was one somewhere. It'll bring back Visa Starfrost in defense position. Let's see how he's going to follow up. We are going to see Yukio. Oh no, this Shirakusai that is the one that is uh, activating right now. These two are getting combined for. Now this is a synchro effect. Yes, so on your turn you fusion summon, and on their turn you synchro summon. And in this case they are synchro summoning what appears to be the amazing dragon. Well, that's going to allow him to return certain monsters back onto the, into the hand if possible. I believe it's up to the number of different level 3 tuners you have in the graveyard. And I believe there are a few in there. There's a, there's a few, there's at least three. And I believe there's going to be the, the drawing effect of the field spell. Yep, because he paid life points, and that is a trigger type effect. And that, there goes the entire field. It's a bit unfortunate that Star Leon had to go as well, but it goes back to the extra deck of Noah where he can deploy it later. Absolutely. The planet is up next. I'm going to add a Scareclaw monster to hand. Now with no monsters on the field, I think they're going to be pretty difficult to put back onto the field. Yep, depends on how many cards are left in hand here. So we got uh, Scareclaw Kashtira. Oh, that that one definitely can get onto the field. And I, the effect of Scareclaw Kashtira doesn't only apply to Kashtira, it also applies to Scareclaw monsters as well. And it does. Very useful in this particular matchup, I would say. Oh, we're going to... Banish a Scareclaw card to summon the cash, uh, the Scareclaw Kashtira. As long as you share a name with it, you can use it to ban you can banish it to summon it out. Now we got to keep an eye on that arrival. If it was still in the graveyard, there's a protection effect that can be applied later on. So we'll see if that comes into play a little bit later. Now remember, the Scareclaw Kashtira can attack in defense mode. And it uses its defense, which is quite formidable. Twenty six hundred. Yeah, it's very big. Now, Carrie is uh, definitely not one of the larger monsters here. Oh, we are seeing. I believe we're going to another Link summon. Yep, second second copy of Lightheart here. Is, is Lightheart once per turn? Uh, using the effect of it is once per duel. Oh. But that's the uh, the special summon from Graveyard one. You can still get another field spell, I believe. And we are getting another field spell. Yeah, so there, there is actually a second effect of this card. A lot of people never see it, but 
you could, uh, if you have Vise of Starfrost, you can special summon it back from the graveyard. Oh, yes, 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 yes you can. So that's the one duel on it. And we're going to activate Vise of Starfrost. Or the, uh, the Light Heart. Destroying Lightheart, and now Beezus is special summoned. Oh, that's oh, that's what he was going for. Yep. And now this is where the other effect can come into play. Now he's going for a Bistial. So the Bistials are fascinating against Gold Pride specifically because they are not good at all against the Gold Pride monsters. They are a they don't variety match. of different attributes, and none of them are light or dark. The light and dark monsters are only in the extra deck, and because of the way that the special modes work. Mm -hmm. where they wear off at the end of the turn if you use it. When they wear off, the monster goes to the extra deck and replaces itself with its basic version instead. Right, right, so they right. They never end up in the graveyard. Oh. And um, they didn't end up in the graveyard this time either because it was sent back to the extra deck by Amazing Dragon. Well, so, now we're going to see the follow-up. We see a Magnum. I think Magnum just added the Druid Swarm, but that means we hit, we hit the end phase, and I believe we just passed turn back to Noah. That's not a good place to be if you are Daniel. The Gold Pride deck can just throw out a ton of damage, and part of the reason is that people forget about the last effect of carry that lets you banish Gold Pride cards from your graveyard to pump up one of your monsters. It's 500 per monster. That's about 1,500 attack points difference right there to be added on. It's, it's kind of like Injection Fairy Lily. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, believe, uh, I believe the Punk Ogre has been activated. I believe that added a monster. To yep. Hand. Ogre Punk was discarded to grab another Xeamon. Xeamon's going to go ahead and grab Deer Note. Jam session, draw a card. Oh, Notice that you're just rolling in cards in this deck. Like, you're burning your own life points out, but you're just getting so many cards, and so many of them can just fly out of your hand right away. There's just huge damage potential and huge removal potential. And at the end of the day, if you have one life point left, you're still in the game, as long as you can use those life points to capitalize and secure your position. It's absolutely worth it. For sure. And Deer Note here is getting another Ogre Dance out onto the field. Deer Note heads the graveyard. And the question really here is, you know, just how do you put game on board? That's a three and an eight. So we'll see if we go Psychic End Punisher here. It is Psychic End Punisher. Oh, that's going to add a big damage difference because it does gain a lot of attack points based off of the difference on life. Absolutely. They're just finishers for days. Like, this, this deck has just so much stuff in it. And the key really is just organizing it all you know, in your brain when you're building the deck and then in-game and making sure you don't, you know, leave yourself open to a counterattack that's actually enough to take you out. And we have just banished, uh, using the effect of Psychic and Punisher, uh, banishing one of your own cards and one of your opponent's monsters. And the Magnumut has been banished. This is going to start to open up the field a little bit. Because if we can get that Visus out of the way and that back row is nothing, then the Psychic and Punisher could just do it on its own. It starts at, what, 35? Yeah. So if it starts at 35, you need 45 more out of it to make 8,000. The difference right now is 42. So f to get a one-shot with Psychic and Punisher, he's going to need to pay once more. Oh, but he's got Leon. There's Gold Pride Leon. That's a tuner monster. And we're going to see a Synchro. That's a 3 and a 5. It's going to get us an 8. For another copy of Dragon Drive. Gonna go ahead and activate it. And it's going to add. Is that Madam Spider? Here's to be Madam Spider. And as Yaman. So that should be enough to get another Amazing Dragon. The Amazing Dragon should be able to clear everything else out so that the monsters can all attack directly. Oh, we have a Captain Carry special summon. No effect there. These two are being used to make Star Leon. Star Leon's going to be huge. Not even using Carry's effect here. No. But uh, Star Leon's going to go all the way up to 4,600. I think there's definitely enough damage right now. We go to battle. 
Druus Worm is coming yep. in though here. And can Druus Worm affect the field enough? I, I mean, I don't think so because there's somebody like, out here with enough attack points to win the game in one blow. And I believe that the Psychic and Punisher, because you have less life points, it is unaffected by activated card effects. Correct. So effect of Druus Worm activates here. Psychic can't be targeted, right? Because your life points so I can, can't do a whole lot. Amazing Dragon is going away instead. Oh, well, that's, this is a, a lot of damage. It, it's, it's, way, <laughs> it's way more. Uh, to be technical, out, it's plus 5,800, I believe, after all is said and done, which would make it 93. <laughs> Ooh, that is a, that's one shot right there. <laughs> it's a little big. It's a little big. Psychic so and Punisher is an incredibly scary card. Uh, you see it in Master Duel quite a lot as well from time to time. There are oh, a lot yeah. of Psychic and Punisher decks going around. It's just, it's scary. <laughs> it is a scary card. And having that just on top of everything else, like you've got the Amazing Dragon, you're clearing cards left and right, Star Leon's taking something out, it can contribute, you know, four, five, six thousand damage in a single strike as well. It's it's hard to, like, block that, even if you have tricks like the Bestial mm -hmm. in the battle phase to get down there. The fact is they're just putting out so many monsters that'll just take you out on their own that you can't really hold up to it. No, uh, absolutely. I look forward to seeing even more cards coming from these players. I want to see if they were going to see a Nitro Head play. Mm -hmm. I love the design of that Nitro card. Head. Nitro Head, I've seen it at my own regionals. Uh, some people don't know what it does, and it actually does something pretty good against, uh, well, the deck I personally play, Cash Tira. So here's a little trick about Nitro Head, and you saw a little bit of this, of this line of play basically in the first game. When Noah first Synchro summoned the Starleon, it went in the extra monster zone, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you don't need to use the extra monster zone, but the reason you do that is because if you also have Nitro Head, you want to deploy the Nitro token, the trap bomb, yep, yep. below the other extra monster zone. Yes. So that if your opponent is playing a Link deck, you know what zone they're going to be in, and they have to commit something that you can destroy. Oh, that's right, because it does blow all the adjacent zones, and yes. including the spell and trap zone, too. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think that's, that's going to catch a lot of people off guard. So that's a little trick if you're thinking about playing this deck in the future to keep your, keep your mind on. And I feel like the, the, the Gold Pride uh, strategy does not have any restriction on what you're able to summon, except for Leon. Yeah, it's only... So when you use Leon's effect... You can only special summon gold pride monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. But when you use this quick synchro effect, you can summon anything from your extra deck as long as you're only using gold pride monsters. Yes. So you got to keep the levels of them in mind. You could have, you know, like Leon carry carry make Trishula, for instance. <laughs> oh, I would love to see a Trishula come down all of a sudden out of nowhere. Yeah, th that would be, like, that's one of those things that, yep, you know what? I'm good. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm done with this I, one. I mean, I, I would be reminded of uh, the good old days of uh, using Formula Synchro. I mean, the effect's very similar. Of yep. course, you get to, you get to perform, a, a perform a Synchro Summit on those turns. And Trisha Light is always the scariest monster to ever come down. <laughs> Every time. It is just a massive amount of disruption. Right. Of course, the modern day version first. of this is the, uh, the math mech, right? Laplacian. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it's gotcha. being used as Super Factorial gotcha. gotcha. as well. Uh, yeah. I believe they have just completed their siding. We'll be getting into game two of the Swiss round one right now, very soon. I'm excited for this. I want to see what Daniel's, like, what is his goal? What's he trying to do if he's not having all of his monsters destroyed? Yeah. Because <laughs> the Scarecrow, the Scarecrow deck, they can do a lot of different things that are pretty scary, if given the chance. Well, I, I usually pretty much fear when they get all the way into... Uh, the try hard and they have everything set up and the, the damage like, and output is, is ridiculous. The amount of attack that it can push is also pretty ridiculous. You gotta keep in mind, Jesus is also a tuner. Yes. So there are a lot of plays that get you doing stuff volume. like Baron as well. <laughs> like you can do a lot of things with this deck and we'll see how many of them Daniel can come up with here in game two. And here we go. Yeah, open a pretty good variety in terms of cards. I think he might have doubled up on one card. Yep, starts with the Pruned Planet. I'm going to search for... I think it's Scareclaw. 
back room. And even by Spotter's guy <laughs> for the scare claws. The sights of the primitive planet. Normal scare claw Astra? Anything on normal? Okay. As I believe uh, is Astra? Astra, not Acro. They do look pretty similar. The color tones of the cards are pretty similar. They're all scare claw A. <laughs> that does make it a little bit more difficult. Okay, we're gonna go into the light heart. Light heart is going to add another ectophobia. All these link one monsters searching for a field spell that searches for another card. So that was the one he had two of, the Astras. Now we're going to give it to be Scareclaw Cashier. Summon it up and banish the other Astra in the graveyard. Oh, he's got right heart as well. It's pretty good. Looks like a, yeah, another one of those cards that you might know of. So Reichardt lets you search for a Scareclaw card when you summon it. Mm -hmm. And then if there are three or more defense position monsters on the field, you can draw a card. Oh, that's really good. I like that other spell that looks for three or more spells in your graveyard after <laughs> searching. <laughs> now, unfortunately, that was hit by an infinite impermanence, uh, and that negated the effects, both effects. And now we're at the Tryhard phase. Tryhard is... Kind of a scary monster. You can make it with any three effect monsters. So it is generic. And what it does, it gets to, I believe it, you get another monster out of the deck. Yeah, so first it shifts everything to defense position. Yes, that part is uh, very, very strong, especially if you have to play with you know non-link uh, monsters. Right. Monsters do? Next, it's unaffected by the activated effects of defense position monsters. So Noah came down with his unaffected monster, the Psychic End Punisher. Daniel's responding with his own here. And then if it's in the extra monster zone, you can target a level 3 Scareclaw in your graveyard, special summon it, and if you do, add a Scareclaw monster from your deck to your hand. And you get locked into special summons of Scareclaws for the rest of the turn here. But I don't think it matters uh, too much for for Daniel. I mean, he does run mostly just Scareclaw. I mean, he's only really locking himself up with the Bestial cards, which I don't think would be uh, the turn that he would be playing them in right now. Now, the cashier, the Scareclaw cashier here is a little rough. Uh, so it looks like in the draw phase, he's going to go ahead and fire off Infinite Impermanence right away. That's going to re-enable the attack position. So we're going Xamon. It's going to activate it. Paying 600. Now each of these other Scareclaws also kind of, they have their own sort of effect while they're in defense position. Yeah, they, they offer more effects or more abilities to the one in the extra monster zone. So Astra gives you more attacks based on the number of defense position monsters. And if that is an act, is that, that is not accurate. That is a balone, I believe. So balone gives you piercing damage, and then acro gives you more attack points. Mm, yes. Now we've seen this line of play before in the previous game, going into the rising car first, and splitting it back up into two other monsters. Mm -hmm. Then we get the wagong, and I'm gonna take a guess. It's gonna be a deer note. That seems like a pretty good guess. Yeah. It is the Deer Note coming out of the deck. I was really excited when Deer Note made it into Master Duel. Oh, yeah? I was pumped for Deer Note. I like the punk cards a lot. Oh, me too. I like them a lot. I'm not the biggest punk fan, though. That's Billy. Oh. Billy is actually punk's biggest fan. <laughs> and we are going to get uh, the Field Felt jam, uh, jam Extreme Session. Mm -hmm. And we're going to maintain a lot of card advantage from this particular opening. And we're drawing now. Oh, and we got a trap card, so, uh, and it we'll is the Square Claw Twin Saw. It's uh, comparable to an Icarus attack. Very, very similar. We're going to clear all this out. Does not control Vesus, though, so they will not be banished. Now, it also has a, a graveyard effect that could come into play here, because he's got the Link 3 or higher monster. Mm-hmm. Sure. And that'll freeze out link monster effects oh, for the rest of the turn. Activated link monster target? effects. Yeah, it's already. Ah, okay, I missed the back then. Oh. Um. Target shift is like something. Sure. 
We're going to use, I believe, a uh, Jam Extreme Session? Uh, that was Deer Note. So Deer that, Note that was a Deer Note. And then right, right, right. Back. Stand by. Yep. Me? Uh, I will go ahead and use Effect of Reich Phobia to target and pop. I will chain impermanence target. Triple impermanence, huh? Oh, that kind of opening. That's a little rough. That's a little rough. You usually want a bunch of different... So the good thing about impermanence is that you can play all three mm -hmm. if you draw all three. But uh, generally speaking, you're going to want different things. Yeah, and also infinite impermanence does not remove any of the monsters off. So if you can't create the proper follow-up, uh, you're only delaying the, uh, the aggression from moving forward. New copy of the planet. Search out a new copy of Ryphobia. And with all three impermanences accounted for... for three? Yep. Oh, this is going to be very safe. I think monster effect negation is not going to be something you have to worry about. Uh, we're going to go into a new copy of Tryhard. Special. It's going to have to do special. Search. That's one, two, only two defense position monsters on the field. Still gets the search. Hmm. You mind if I read what yeah, go ahead. Thing does? Sure. Well, there's an interesting pick. As defanging. Scareclaw defanging the continuous spell. It offers a quite, quite a bit of protection. Your opponent cannot target Scareclaw Link monsters or Visa Star Frost. You control with card effects, and they cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. That's the, that's the boss level protection that it's, I love like seeing. It'd be pretty good. It'd be pretty good against a deck that has a lot of targeting effects. Though this particular deck with a lot of targeting effects yeah, can also get very big monsters. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I guess the additional the additional effect to defanging would be that any you banish any monster destroyed by battle with any Scareclaw Link monster of Starfrost. So you get kind of the old Dark Magician of Chaos effect of just banishing everything he takes out. Yep. That's an underrated effect. Like, passive banishing of things, I think, is another thing that people underrate a lot. Mm -hmm. Just how many decks need to keep recycling their own resources to keep going, that sort of thing. I see it over in the Rivalry of Warlords tournaments a lot, mm -hmm. where people forget to use Tikulia to target something so that it'll be banished when it leaves the field. But that's part of how you get people, is just by targeting their stuff over and over again so they just can't get this back, can't get this back, can't get this back. <laughs> and eventually they run out of stuff before you do because you're a pendulum deck. <laughs> now, let's talk about side decking as the players are, you know, finish up their siding right now. Like, what are some of the more popular side cards? Yeah, what so not really, uh, not really an expected matchup here mm -hmm. in this one right now. So maybe you just kind of have to throw your plans out and just, you know, think about what's happened in this match so far. So you've got this one really big, powerful link monster mm -hmm. that's causing you a bunch of problems. Uh, you've got things that are searching a lot of different cards. So I'm thinking that I think that you kind of want like a draw and lockbird against the Scareclaw deck because they're just searching out a ton of different cards yeah. from their deck, and they need a lot of them to do their plays. So something like draw and lockbird I think would be really effective uh, in this matchup for Noah. Actually, be effective for either of them, really, given how many searches that they do mm -hmm. from turn to turn. So that's kind of the card that I'm looking at to be like, if we see this card, this could be the thing that turns the game in favor of whoever draws it. Okay. And we are moving into game three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My, my apologies. All right, here we go. Got it. Okay. It is Noah's choice. Yes. 16 yeah, minutes yeah, to go, it. plenty of time. Yeah. Got it. Good match so far. I, I love the interaction. And I, I just love how cards are being destroyed, not just being negated left sure. and right. Well, maybe except for the impermanence. Yeah, <laughs> that was a bit it, it didn't help them. <laughs> it wasn't, it uh, wasn't expected. Mm, I know it starts with the Ammon. The best opening. Well, this one was a normal summon. Yeah, and, uh, maybe the emergency teleport's a little better. A little bit better. But the, but the, definitely the monster you want to see. Let's go ahead and fetch. It depends on the hand here. Yeah, not sure what else is in there. It looked like a bunch of monsters, so maybe you're getting Foxy Tune here. We're going to Deer Note. So going Deer Note. Also works if you have a bunch of monsters in your hand. Yes. But do you know you get to summon either Deer Note uh, itself or the other monster? Oh, it's Ogre. All right, we're doing Ogre Dance. Still filtering through the hand, getting the cards where he needs them to be. And there is a Shirakusai. 
All right, so now we can see how things are starting to line up here. We've got the Deer Note, we've got the Sharkusai. I'm going to activate Deer Note, Special Summon Sharkusai, and send Deer Note to the graveyard. Now we're in business, paying 600 to Fusion Summon. There's another 600, right? Yep. Okay. I'll do the one to six. Perfect. And there is the rising right. carp. Sure. And the effect goes through. All right. So uh, we are at data. one, two, three, four, five uh, monster summoned. Are we, get, are we going to see a Nibiru? Well, now, that's the other thing. It's in a lot of decks this weekend. I'd be playing it somewhere, at least in my side deck. I, you, you can't go to tournaments right now without it. I <laughs> Well, that is the. Uh, but it's would, five it, monsters, but it's four summons. Uh, yes, yes. Now, was, would that be the right timing for the card? Uh, well, timing uh, Nibiru is also a very, very key component to the card. And we are seeing Nibiru being activated. May I use a token judge? And it will be at. What's the attack and defense? It's kind of a small token. 31 and 64. So, well, 3,000 actually. Nine, nine plus 21? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, 3K, you're right, you're right. 3K and then... 21. Uh, uh, do you know that? Yeah, that's one thing you got to keep an eye on. It's five or more monsters, not five or more summons. Yes. There's that other card on Master Duel that cares, you know, if two monsters are summoned sure. at the same time, you only draw one card, but we don't talk about that one. It's not... <laughs> I don't want to speak that into existence. Sure. And we do get the summon back of the Wadong, and that is a Nitro Head. And a Captain Carry. Nitro Head, I think you always have to say his name like he's a monster truck. Nitro Head. <laughs> and Captain Carry is going to be able to uh, fetch into the Start Your Engine. Now, this is pretty impressive. Like, Noah just got Nibiru right before he would have gotten two more searches and a bunch of other cards. And he's still going. He's still getting more cards. And that's that's why you need that blend of the two decks and not just play one or the other. Yes. And that's why I, I said earlier that you have to time your Nibiru. And that and timing your Nibiru really is based on your knowledge of the matchup. Sure. So on standby, we're going to send a Nitro token over. And well, just like I mentioned before, he's going to put it right in front of the other extra monster zone. And that is going to create a big limitation. Yeah. So... This is really rough, because if he starts doing his Scareclaw stuff and puts the Lightheart in there, well, he can lose both the Nibiru and the Lightheart in the yes. show. <laughs> He's explaining the cross pattern. If you played Bomberman, you know how Bomberman Oh, yes, I do, I do. That's how it works. I, I love how it functions. I love how you just give them a token in standby phase, too. <laughs> yeah, it plays around triple tactics as well. Yes. Standby phase. We're going... For a Scareclaw immediately being used to Link Summon, he Wait, has to use that zone. Yeah, I mean, he, he took the the Star Leon took the left zone, and uh, Rectophobia has been added to hand uh, from the effect of the Light Heart. It's actually pretty hard to summon into an adjacent zone to a Scareclaw monster right now with that token in the way. There it is. And he had to use his normal summon already. There's just, there's no zone to special summon. Targeting the special monster that's currently in the field. Now, which effect is going for? Oh, Ghost Ogre. Ghost Ogre. All right. Does he have called by? He does! Oh no! <laughs> yes. So the Nitro Head has been destroyed. I don't think he gets to uh, ignite that token anymore. He does not. A rival is going to target uh, the Scareclaw in the graveyard, and it's going to special summon out in defense position. Starts the engines, and we are going to destroy that. And uh, we're going to pick out three different gold pride monsters. Not even one. different, just three gold pride monsters. Yeah, three gold pride monsters right here. Leon, 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 and Leon can get back Nitro Head. Yeah. And 
Oh boy. Any effect on the summon? Yes, Leon will target the Nitro Head. Yep, targeting Nitro Head. Sure. Oh, that's going to basically reignite uh, that token. Here we go. Oh, he's got triple tack. He's got it. Oh, he's going for the triple tactic. Talents. To steal. Taking, taking control as the effect. Now, that part of the effect does not target, so that's, uh, we're going to see a choice happen during the resolution here. Yeah, I think you have to. Oh, is chaining? Oh. Uh, the Nibiru is fine. I'll activate effect of Scareclaw Arrival to protect, uh, banish it and protect the Arrival is going to protect the Lightheart by banishing, uh, but that is also going to clear off that so token as well. Protect it once, yeah. Uh, chain star, target, uh, uh, oh, Star Leon's going to chain and target uh, onto the Lightheart. So it does get destroyed, and the token is uh, destroying everything. I believe the effect is going through. I, I don't think this went down exactly correctly. No, I don't think so. so because we're using the arrival, we're resolving the chain. Correct, correct. Because uh, that is a uh, destruction substitution, yes. and that you know happens during the resolution. You just, you just do it. What happens is like when your opponent says, "Well, I'll chain this effect." Anything. Yeah, that shouldn't have uh, that just, shouldn't have happened. It's just a general. Uh, this is one of those things that happens a lot. <laughs> it just happens. You just have to play more to kind of get that experience. Yeah, and I think they might be working this out right now. Looks like they're chatting with Earl. Uh, oh, there. So all of the um, things that happened are legal, just not the way that the action Yes. Happened. I mean, if, if a new chain occurred, or at the end of the current chain, uh, the Star of the End could still activate its effect, still to aim to destroy the Lightheart afterwards. Yep. So that's still a possible game state that we could still move forward into. Well, it'll be interesting to see how this uh, turns out. Looks like we're just going to keep going. Yeah, I think that might be the accepted. My suspicion is that it might have gone this way either way. Yes. So it's probably fine. Maybe he takes Leon instead. And yes, the I believe the arrival is not once per turn. No. It's just the the, uh, the defense effect, effect as well. yeah, the, uh, the protection. Thank you. Uh, special right card from hand to search and then draw. There are more than uh, three monsters in defense position, so it's going to be able to get the second effect of uh, Rectard. Yeah, so this is a case where both of Leon's restrictions are in effect, because it revives something, and it would need to use Gold Pride monsters. Oh, that's, so that's very limited. Really, uh, I don't believe there's a synchro play here right now. I believe all the effects have been used on Noah's side. Oh, we're seeing a defanging. Reinhardt has been summoned onto the field. All monsters on the field, because of the continuous effect, will be shifted to defense oh, position. Tryhard to special below. Yep. Tryhard's going to special summon and a. Yep. Is that Balone? Onto the field? Looks like Balone. And that gives piercing battle damage. Okay. That, that uh, token there was not really a whole yep. lot of defense. No, so it, it was summoned <laughs> at a pretty early stage. Hundred attack and defense. Uh, I can attack twice and it does piercing. Okay. Piercing, double attack. And anything I destroy is going to be banished. Yeah, the and the banish. Uh, this effect. Yeah, any of my link monsters that destroy a monster on the field are banished instead. I will go ahead and activate its other effect to banish the light oh, heart easy. to target. Uh, I believe Target Daniel this might this have an option to just remove all the monsters off of the field now, yep. including the battle uh, phase. What's the defense on this? Oh, this is going to inflict piercing damage. Minus 400, so it'll be a 2k, two, two okay. correct? Okay. So I'll swing at it for 1,000. Uh, so it's a 2,400 defense token. Attack pass by a 3,000 monster. Mm -hmm. And I'll swing at this, so that'll be at minus 3, it'll be at 900. So I'll swing for... Uh, Oh, also the field spell also adjusts oh, yes. the, uh... You have like 500, I think? Yeah, that's, uh, that's huge. Uh, main phase two. Uh, now, the field has been cleared. One, I think that, uh, I think Dan has committed every single card he had. 
Oh, yeah. and uh, no uh, concedes. Yeah, those those monsters were going to be banished as well with the D. Yes, yes. Kind of a crazy first match, though. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff. That was a really good one. 